first chapter, and there was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And I'm not going to read about all of his riches. He had a lot of them. He had a lot of camels, and he had 7,000 sheep, and brother, he, he had it. He had everything in the world. But time went on, and the Bible tells us over here uh, that there came a certain day. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, What comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fears God and cheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Isn't that great? God builds a hedge around those he loves, even around the sheep. Amen. The work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land, but put forth thine hand now. And took all that he hath, and he'll curse thee to thy face. All right. We won't read the entire chapter, but I'm going to read this one because this is going to stand out in the message tonight. In the 18th verse, and while he was speaking, there came another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the elder brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. I want to talk to you tonight on the subject, the mystery of suffering. The mystery of suffering. This world is packed and jammed full of suffering. Everybody that lives on this earth suffers. I don't care who you are, sinner or saint, we all suffer in this world. But there is a difference between the sinner and the saint. We have somebody to help us out and to stand by us through it all. But I want to talk about Job tonight, and let us look into the mystery of suffering. The question is, where or what is its source? Does it come from God, or does it come from the devil? Who's the cause of all of it? You hear preachers preaching, and... A fellow that lived a righteous life, and uh, if he joined the church 40 years ago, uh, he went to glory land. Or if they lived a good life all their life, then they accuse God of coming along, taking that little blonde-headed girl or little boy. They accuse God of putting cancers on people, TB, all the horrible things that come upon the human race. The mystery of suffering. What's the source of it? Where in the world does it come from? Now, the Bible tells us that Job hated evil. He didn't like it. If you love God, you'll always hate sin. If you love me, he says, you will keep my commandments. You hate sin. But Job 
made a mistake. Oh, he was a perfect man, but that don't mean that he couldn't make a mistake. That meant in the Old Testament he was a honest man. He was a truthful man. He was a man that lived and walked uprightly. But he made a mistake. He married a fool. Oh, what a tragedy to get tied up with somebody that don't love God. I see people, they go out and marry some little worldly flapper and expect to be a preacher. You're full of bugs. You better watch your stuff. You better choose the right one. Or she'll land you in the trash pile. They go out and marry them a little old pallet, paint shop, barber shop, or some other kind of shop. And that's all she lives for, day and night. Not to see how pretty she can be to her husband, but to everybody else's husband that walks down the street. That's a sin. That's a sin. God hates that kind of attitude. God hates this sexy, evil, ungodly, lustful generation. But he married this old girl. Job was a businessman. He must have did a lot of traveling. His wife had the raise. The seven kids, and she didn't do too good a job. Every time Job prayed, he'd get down and he'd pray, and here was his prayer. He, he said, lest they may have blasphemed. And he would talk to God and pray and ask God some way or another, to take care of those kids. Well, they wasn't kids. They were growing up now. He said, and it was so that Job sent up and sacrificed under the, uh, for them, rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. But Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. He knew they wasn't living right. He knew they wasn't doing right. And he was afraid they'd curse God in their hearts. And really that's what they finally did. A father and mother's prayers only go so far. Then the death angel takes care of the rest of it. Now Job raised us these children with a wife that was foolish, very foolish. And it wrecked his whole home. You've got to watch who you marry, man or woman. It takes a lot of wisdom to figure it out. That's right. Somebody met and they married in nine days. They came back in less than 90 days getting divorced. I said, you ought to be whipped and made live together a few years. The action of foolish is to get married in nine days. You don't know nobody in nine days. Amen. It pays to hang around and watch and listen, you know. Look. And listen every once in a while. Amen. Now, I know that sometimes one will turn out bad. They had a good beginning. I know that, too. But I want you to notice here the devil goes to church. The sons of God had met, and they were shouting and praising God and worshiping the Lord. And they was having a time of their life. 
And who do you think they looked up and saw coming in? The devil. The devil didn't need to go to some of the churches. He had them. But he always goes to the true blue. One hundred percent. That's built on the right foundation. The apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. This is the church the devil goes to. We had a few devil possessed people brought in at meetings and they'd fall out and roll. Somebody said, We never had that in our church. I said, No, you never will. You don't have enough of power there to stir the devil up to make him want to wallow and roll. But when they met Jesus, the Bible said they fell. Hallelujah. Why, most of the churches would never know the devil was there. And he wouldn't hear enough of gospel to keep him awake. He would sleep the whole service. But brother, when somebody levels off and says, you've got to repent. You really got to repent and turn around. And then said you've got to get baptized in Jesus' name. And he said you've got to receive the Holy Ghost. And then you've got to live holy. Oh, Lucifer comes out of his feet. He wakes up. He calls for reinforcement. This is a church of the true blue. The one God. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. Amen. He calls his devils. And he said, we've got to get busy. This is the true blue. These people are really saved. And the Lord looked up and saw him coming. As he walked in, and they were having a time, and he put a coldness on the service. They was all worshiping the Lord and having a good, good time. And they looked up, and all of them knew him. All those angels knew him. Now, what's he coming here for? Yeah, we remember the fight we had. We remember the sin he committed. But he comes in and he just walks around. He just flips around. God said, what are you doing here, Lucifer? And where have you been? He said, well, he said, I've been down on earth. He said, I've been walking all around up and down the earth. That's what he said. That's exactly what he said. He said uh, this. And then Satan asked his Lord and said, Oh, this, the Lord said, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered, Ah, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. My friend, he's a walking. You know what's the matter with him? He'd have a nervous breakdown if he didn't walk. He knows where he's going. He's got to walk. You ever see somebody, ah, so nervous and upset, they're just all keyed up and got to walk. Just got to walk. Got to walk. Here he is. And in heaven, here he is walking. Walking up there. Right into the presence of Almighty God. And the Lord decided to gig him a little bit. Oh, I wish he could find a lot more people around on earth to gig him with. And he said, well, since you've been walking around all over the earth, looking the place over, uh, have you run into Job? Oh, yeah, I know Job. Yes, sir, I know him and I know something else. you got a hedge around him. You know, tell them, how many times that old rascal crawled around that hedge looking for a hole? But there ain't a hole in God's head. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! No hole in his fence. And, uh, but he said, I'll tell you what, God. He said, old Job, he said, who wouldn't serve you? He got 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and He's got money in the bank, and he's wealthy and everything, and you got him all sheltered, can't even get to one of his sheep. 
I couldn't get to one of his camels. I can't even beat a camel on the hills and make him pitch and throw, you, throw him off. I'm just, just plain hampered. I can't get to him. But you've been so good to him. If you will let me to him like I get to other men, he'll curse you to your face. He'll tell you right off. God said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Well, the devil said, you're going to have to prove it. Well, God said, I'll do it because I'll write this down and make a fool out of you the rest of the time of the earth. I ain't going to let you do this, Job, to everybody. But I know old Job, and I'm going to let you in. He said, go ahead, but don't you touch him. He had all his stuff to touch him. But he did something about his wife. The devil wasn't sure wasn't going to touch her. He said, now you devil sell for her. That old gal, she's just a big old fool, and I'm going to use her a little later on. So you just lay off of her. Don't want one of you touching her. So he got it organized. And he looked the crowd over and he saw that bunch of kids. The oldest son. And he said, here's what I'll do. And he got that oldest son to give a big blowout drunken party. And invite all of his brothers and all of his sisters to come. Come on, we're going to have a knockdown and drag out. We're going to have wine like you ain't ever seen before. We're going to have a time. We're going to get some musicians, and we're going to dance all night. Come on in. Well, the devil knows how to organize it, you know. He knew he could talk to the old boy. He'd been talking to those boys all the time. They'd been drinking wine a long time before now. But this was a real special devil conjured up deal. And the devil was going to make it a real blowout. Because he had plans. Because he wanted Job to hear that his kids had all died drunk. Yeah, he's got it all fixed up. And then he went. He goes out. And he caused far to fall and burn up all the sheep. Only one fellow left to come running in and said, Hey, Job! And out there, and the fire fell, and everything, every sheep he got burned up. And I'm the only fellow left, and the rest of them got killed. And about the time he got through here, come another and running, and he said, Hey, Job, all your donkeys, they're gone, and all your camels, and other said, They're gone. He just stood there in shock. And here come the other one with the sad story about the kids. Let's go back to that and take a look at it. And thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the elder's brother's house. And behold, I came a great wind from the wilderness, and it smote the four corners. Brother, this was a new type. Most of the winds hit just one side, two corners. But honey, this had come straight down and hit all four of them at one time and flattened it right flat down on the whole crowd. Now, the picture I want you to see, and don't forget the devil, is the author of storms. Don't forget that one of his names means the prince of the power of the air. All the hurricanes and cyclones, the devil stirs them up. That's why you need to pray when you hear there's one in the community. Because the devil stirred it up. Can you see it? The Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that terrible storm hit them. The devil fixed that storm up. He said, we're going to drown that Christ. We're going to drown him and his disciples. This will end the church. So he got him a great big storm, and here he came. Jesus stepped out. He didn't say, now this is the Father's will. Live or sink, swim or die, 
It's the Father's will. The storm is hitting. No, he rebuked. If it had been God, the Spirit doing it, he would never rebuked it. He rebuked the storm. And he lay down. Because he knew the prince of the power of the air had brought the storm to sink the ship. Now I want you to watch. The party's going strong. And the devil really is working it up now. He's got the storm coming out of the wilderness. He's working her up. All the principalities and the spiritual wickedness in high places. Brother, they had a howling wind coming. And here's the elder sons of Job. Hand me another bottle, John. Hand me another bottle, uh, Bill. Hand me another bottle, Sam. Come on, boy. This is some of the best you ever drank in all of your life. Crank the music up over there, boy. Hey, the wind's blowing. It must be coming up a rain. Pay no attention to the rain. Uh, we're going to have a time around here. But one of the girls said, listen, have you noticed that howling, howling wind out there? It's blowing a little bit. Oh, give her another drink. Give her another drink. Uh, let her drink her troubles away. Ah, uh, we've had storm before. The wind's blown before. And the houses stood ever storm. But funny, funny, uh, man, you better listen here. This is not the kind you've had before. This is a devil sent storm, a devil planned storm, and he's gonna sink you. He's gonna kill the last one of you. You better be on your knees to praying instead of drinking wine and dancing. But all of a sudden the lights went out. And the roof began to cave in. And suddenly there were screams in the night. As the roof fell like a, a death trap right up on top of every one of them and crushed them. All except one. He said to the storm, just don't bother that servant there. He's got to take a message. The devil can kill seven and leave the one he wants. There probably were some more servants there. All died. Satan had one picked out to carry the message. Isn't it strange how he'll always pick out one to carry the sad news around town that the church is falling apart and old dad's dying and all that? And can you hear the old elder son there just before the roof keys in saying, boys, just wait till old Paul dies. When I inherit, when we inherit all of his wealth, we're going to have a blowout like you ain't never heard about. And about that time, it blew out. Judgment. Judgment day had come. Dad, you prayed a lot of prayers and you kept the devil off a long time. They didn't know that because Dad prayed and Dad lived for God, they'd had a hedge around about them all those years. They'd have been dead a long time ago. But the father that prayed and kept the hedge up protected his boys and his daughters along with him until finally God said, okay, everything's in your hand. He knew they was rotten. He knew the kind of life they were living. And he said, all right, it's in your hands, but don't touch Job. And he said, it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone. I only am escaped alone to tell me. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. He worshipped. Take everything I've got, I'm still going to worship. Kill all my young ones, I'm still going to worship. I'm going to hang in there. Then they was having church again. And all of a sudden, here comes the devil. The second time. And the Lord was ready for him. And he said, now, 
What do you think, Satan? My servant Job, you took everything he had. And he's buried all of his children and he's still worshiping me. Yeah, but he said, Jehovah, you know that Job knows as long as he's healthy, you'll give it all back to him in time. He knows that. If you will let me at him, because all a man's got, he'll give for his skin. He's almost right, but not quite. And the Lord knew this was the last straw. And he said, all right. But you spare his life. The devil left church that day. He was, if a devil could be happy, he was happy. He was loaded down with the most deadly germs. And he headed for Job's house. And he found Job sitting there somewhere grieving about his children. And he dances with glee around Job. And he sprinkles some of that deadly germs upon his body. He didn't know what was going on. But during the night he began to itch, sting and burn. And by the next day, boils had broke out all over his body. Oh, he had them from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Great big old boils. He couldn't sit down. He couldn't lay down without suffering. He got him an old brush like made out of crockery. Scraped his body with it. Scraping off the corruption. Still looking up. Still looking at the corruption as it runs out of the boils. And he lifted up his eyes. And it must have shook hell and moved heaven when he said, Though he slay me, I'll trust him. Hallelujah. He said, And in this body, those skin worms destroyed. I'll see him. I'll see him. I'll see him. Well, I tell you, it's tough to be sick. But God loves Job. And this is a secret. I want you to notice that God didn't kill one sheep. He didn't kill one camel. He didn't kill one of the children. The Lord did not put the boils on him. Satan left church the presence of God and went out and did it all. All he wants is permission to get you. If you ever sin long enough and drift far enough from God until he gets permission to get you, you'll have to wake up and your teeth will be falling out. You'll have to wake up and there'll be boils all over your body. Because the devil can start it just like he can start the storm. He can touch you tonight and you'd wither away and be in the morgue by daylight. Satan has the power of death once God withdraws his hand. So there's that. Though you slay me, God permitted Satan to test you. Now, Job made one mistake. I want to read it to you, and I don't want you to never forget it. He said, the Lord gives, and the Lord taketh away. He missed it on the last one. See, he didn't know what was going on. The Lord gave Job all he had, but the Lord didn't take it away. The devil took it away. The Lord gave Job good health. The Lord didn't take it away. The devil took it away. This is a mystery of suffering. The devil goes about doing evil. The Lord goes about doing good. 
We need to get the two separated here tonight. All right. He was permitted to test him. Now, I want you to notice that Satan organized and got everything planned and ready. And finally, I don't read about him going back to church no more. He knew he was whipped. I want you to listen to that tonight. When you want to whip the devil on this thing that he's on you about, Remember Jesus resisted him and the third time he left? Remember, this is the last blow. Had the devil came back, God would have threw him out. And he did later. Threw him out of the heavens. I've tested Job. I've tested him. He lived for me when he was prosperous. Some people can't do that. You give them a little money, they'll backslide. But Job lived for God while he was yet the richest man in all the land. And when he lost it all, he still lived for God. He lived for God when he was healthy. He lived for God when he was sick. And so, about the time... They've got the news. Here comes this little old wife of his. Probably all painted up. Men are skirt on. Say, what in the world is going on around here, Job? Well, just buried the last one of our young ones. What? What are you doing sitting in that pile of ashes? Where's our cows? Sheep? House? Why? You can see her frisking around there. Mad. She said, why don't you curse that God you've been serving all these years and die? I just blasphemed the Holy Ghost. I just curse him and lay down and die. Honey, he wouldn't have been in no shape to lay down and die if he had have cursed God. I want to tell you one thing. If you're not ready to die, if you're not born again, you better not die. You better not pick that pistol up and blow your brains out. Just go ahead and chew the barrel off, but don't shoot yourself. Well, you ain't ready to die. You ain't going where it's peaceful. One dear black sister, they had written on her husband's tombstone. At rest. And she said... He ain't at rest. I said, we're the ones at rest. I said, he lived like the devil. He beat us. He drank up all we had. I said, he ain't at rest. I said, that means his family's at rest. My friend, that's the way it is. You blow your brains out, you ain't at rest. You whore, there ain't no rest. You down where the devils are. You down where the other maniacs are. All right, she said, go ahead and curse God and die. He said, you talk like a foolish woman. And that's exactly what she was, just a great big old fool. Because you don't curse God for anything. Because we're not getting hardly anything down here. We're going to get all ours on the other side. Hallelujah. Well, I want to spend all of my life piling up some gold for and die and leave it to the Antichrist. I'm going where they walk on that junk. They don't use black top up there. They're going to use pure gold on the streets. Where we walk. Oh, 
All right. Now I want you to notice something. The Bible tells us that God turned the captivity of Job, not the devil. God healed Job. When he prayed for his so-called friends, God restored his wealth, not the devil. He didn't ever give him a plug nickel. He hated Job. God gave him a younger wife. Oh, you say, we reckon that and didn't get converted? The Bible didn't say nothing about it. She was a fool. And she's already too old to have kids. So Job had seven more. God gave him a young one. Hallelujah. So he gave him all twice as much as he had before. God never lets the devil walk on you and get by with it. I want you to mark that down in your little book. If you've been being walked on, your day is coming. Your day will roll around and you will do some walking on him. Oh, we're tested and tried sometimes. But thank God it don't last always. The sun's going to shine. Hallelujah! There's a rainbow in the sky. God's going to come. While old Job was sitting there and all them boys telling him how bad he was, and all of a sudden God appeared in a whirlwind. Shut up! Talk a while. Brother, when he got through talking, I want you to know it was quiet. You could have heard a pin drop. Where was you at when I laid the foundations of the world? I'm the one that created Lucifer. That old boy is on a leash. I only let him do this. And I want to tell you, when I get through shaking the Lord's hand, I want to hunt old brother Job up. I'm going to say, boy, you will never know how much that story has meant to me. Man, I said, whenever everything was sweeping out from under you, and the devil pulled the rug out, you hung in there and watched, I like you. Hallelujah. Praise God. When it looked like the sun wouldn't shine no more, I'd get out the book of Job and read it. Hallelujah. My Lord, have mercy. What a, what a story. What an encouragement. You can live it. You can do it. Now, you know the devil was there. He sent men. Special trained men to say, Job, now come on, confess it. You've been running around on your wife. Or maybe you stole some of those camels. Come on, Job, and confess it. Because everybody reads what they sow. And boy, I we never heard of nobody getting clean like you. Other than how the Lord cleans your plow, you ain't got a crippled goat left. You smell so bad we have to stay fifty yards away. Man alive. And you still gonna say you on the right side? Yeah, he said, I'm still on the right side. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I like that kind of faith. I like that kind of determination. God, give us a will like that. So never question, but please God. Through thick and thin. Well, I love this story. It ended so beautiful. The musicians come. You know, the devil can kill you if God lay. The devil can send a cyclone and blow you to pieces. 
is God for me. Somebody may be picked out. The devil's been watching day and night. They're just about to step over the deadline. He's counting the days. Counting the hours. God is slowly turning from that person. And when he turns his back on him, I hate him. Because he's talked about me. Before he backslid, he run me down. Got up and said, oh, thank God for victory over old Slewfoot. He called me Slewfoot. The devil never forgives. He don't know how to forgive. You need to think you can go back and say, now, Mr. Slewfoot, or Mr. Lucifer, I want to repent. I'm sorry I talked about you like that. I'd sort of like to get on your side. And he'll open up his chicken coop. He says, step inside, boy. We'll fix it all up. When you step inside, the gate falls. The door shuts. And he'll say, I'd just like to tell you that I can't forgive. When you do me wrong, there ain't but one place that'll give me any satisfaction. That's to see you in hell. Because if I forgave you, you'd fool around and go back to that Pentecostal church and repent again. Be running me down. No, I think I'll take care of you. Before you get another chance. You don't know the great struggle between two worlds. The battle is raging. The forces of God and the forces of hell. You know, I got to praying the other day when the Lord appeared to me years ago. I knew I was going to Jerusalem someday. When I got there, I never told that until just a while back. All of a sudden, a supernatural being stepped into my room and I leaped out of the bed. I stood trembling. I was to preach the next night. I don't know, but I had the feeling I had met Micro, the art. Angel, the mightiest angel, the two great verses, Michael and Gabriel. Because I had been ordained to pray for the Jews, and Michael is the angel that set up to fight for the Jews. And today, while I was praying, all of a sudden it hit me that Michael needed my help. There's a few things that Michael don't have. He's a great warrior. But he don't know what it is to be saved by the blood. Baptized in the name. And filled with the Holy Ghost. The angels desire to look into this. And I said, oh Lord, I'm going to release my prayers to my cross. I'm going to let him use my prayers in the name of Jesus to go forth against hell with the blood because of me and because of the church. We're going to add to him. I felt good about it. I felt good about it. I had a 
strange feeling lately I'm going to get to meet Michael. And know who he is. I didn't know that in Jerusalem, 14 stories high. But I believe I'm going to meet him. I believe we're going to work together. Amen. He's going to furnish something I can't furnish in the battle against hell over there. And I'm going to furnish him something he don't have. And we're going to work together. Hallelujah. I've had angels to help me before. In healing services, I've known they were there. I knew they were moving across the audience and touching people. We were working together. I would speak the word of faith in Jesus' name. The angel would minister strength to a cripple to stand up. Amen. You know, the angels came when Jesus was so weak and they strengthened him. Angels can strengthen us human beings. So they have filed in many times by good brother Kenneth Reed that the devil has hit with a stroke lately. He's written those great and mighty books on the name of Jesus and one God. Has been visited often with many mighty angels. We have sat for hours and shared our experiences. He is known to be able to communicate with many angels that come and visit him, mightily used of God. Yes, it's the end time. The angels have come down to work with the church. Hallelujah. I've sensed their presence on the platform. I've sensed their presence in the altar when we were battled demonic powers. Amen. Well, I don't know what you want tonight. I preach to you. I let you in on the inside of the mystery of suffering tonight. But God didn't say it. The devil did. And if you'll call on Jesus, he will lift you. Let us stand, please. Oh, just a little while to stay here. Just a little while to wait. Just a little while to labor. In the path that's always straight. Oh, just a little more of trouble, sinful state, then we'll enter heaven's portals, ligand. Oh, it's just a little while to stay. Oh, it's just a little while to wait.